The Eagles last year were a force to be reckoned with, fielding one of the most powerful offenses in the league who collectively averaged over 400 yards of offense per game and was ranked second best by StatMuse. On top of this, they also housed one of the strongest defenses in the league, ranked fourth best in the nation by PFN. So with these stats combined, it's no surprise to anyone that they were a title contender and will likely be again next year. And while everybody knows how strong offense and defense are, there is an area where many of fans have wanted to see significant improvement this offseason. And that, of all places, is the punting game. Without a doubt, last year was not a great year for Aussie punter Aaron Sipos, who's 6th worst in the league 45.6 yard average, accompanied by 3rd worst in the league 40.6 net yard average, left many to have more to be desired. While these numbers may not mean much when your offense is blowing teams out of the water like against the Giants in San Francisco in the playoffs, albeit he was not the one punting in those games, you really feel that incremental difference when taking on a team like the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl who can match or beat you on offense and defense and have an all-pro punter to boot, which looks like the Chiefs netting 31.5 yards a punt on a couple of good returns, but the Eagles netting just 9 yards a punt after giving up a breaking 65-yard punt return at the top of the fourth to set up a painful touchdown in a nail-biting game. The punt that set it up was already a short 38-yard punt that needed to be at least 10 extra yards, but that's a different story for a different time. Because the Eagles clearly wanted to bring in someone else, and they very well needed to. Coming into the draft, we had the big four that people knew were going to get signed and even drafted potentially. Those were Turk, Beringer, Robbins, and Evans. And three of those did get drafted with Beringer going to the Patriots, Robbins going to the Bengals, and Evans going to the Rams, leaving some Eagles fans worried that their organization wasn't taking the situation seriously enough. But then, out of nowhere, came the signing of Ty Zettner. The man who you are all here to learn more about today. Is Ty the right guy to sign? Will he even win the job? And if he does, will he be able to be a difference maker for the organization and even the X factor for the Eagles if they do go back to the Super Bowl? Those are the questions I'm answering today. First, let's take a look at Ty's punting in his last year of college. He was a top 20 punter in terms of average with a 44.49 average in his senior season. On top of that, his team hosted a top 15 net average, meaning that he wasn't outkicking his coverage. On the contrary, actually, I think Ty has had some very impressive hang times that he's put in games, and he's hit some very good ratio balls, meaning that the hang time and distance matched up nicely to force fair catches. He also has a great ability to get beneath the ball, and in my perspective, he has a very linear and repeatable swing pattern that doesn't revolve around him slicing beneath the ball to get it to spiral, and I think his fundamentals are quite sound. This allows for him to have some explosive games like against Kansas where he averaged over 60 yards a punt on three punts with a long of 72. Against Oklahoma, he was absolutely demolishing punts in the hang time department, not just forcing fair catches, but also forcing local airspace authorities to tap the no-fly zone they have above the stadium. But that's just Ty hitting spirals, which is cool and the spiral is the traditional form of punt, so that's important, but it's hardly all he can do. I'd say the most impressive thing about Ty's film, the thing Eagles fans should really be happy about, is his Louis ball. Quick backstory on the Louis is a type of punt similar to a drop punt, which flies like a saw blade through the air rather than a spiral, but instead of kicking it straight on towards your target, the punter will angle their body to the right, then kick it back across their body to the left. Now while this sounds like a lot, it's really not as tricky as it may seem for returners, but it does lead to a higher than average fair catch percentage due to the fact that returners usually have to play it safe because they're going to be covering lots of ground running laterally to go get beneath the ball. A punter who utilizes this type of punt a lot was Rigoberto Sanchez hitting it over 70% of the time to a great deal of success when he was uninjured back in 2021. And I would say Ty hits his ball even cleaner on average than Rigo does, putting up a couple 50 plus yard punts in college of this style and easily has a floor of 45 to 48 yards if all he does is hit this punt. Speaking of floors, let's evaluate his floor real quick. What is his downside? Now, scraping through his game from, he really has kind of two types of miss hits. The first of which I'll call it shooting it straight up the elevator shaft where he misses the ball to the middle of the field high and short. In the NFL, this will likely just be fair caught or maybe even let bounce and this type of punt is usually a half turn spiral which means 
on average is going to bounce to the left or backwards, rarely ever forwards, and definitely very rarely ever to the right. But obviously, it's a football, anything can happen. This has led to him hitting a couple of stinkers, like against Alabama, he hit two sub 30 yard punts amidst a flurry of pretty good punts that were all 50 plus yards. My second criticism of this spiral punts is his directional abilities that are suspect at best, detrimental at worst. His worst balls clearly come when he's trying to be more of a directional punter, and his best balls come when the coaches presumably give him the green light to kick it down the middle. He hits a very clean directional drop punt though, but he has set his team up in some precarious situations from being backed up by hitting a low spiraling punt down the middle. And the last thing I'd have to say is that he covers a lot of ground taking his spiral punts upwards of four and a half to five yards, which closes the difference on blockers have to get home. This is probably the easiest problem to fix, but it is something that would have to be fixed if he makes it to the final roster. Now, let's talk about winning that job. The Eagles have done something pretty interesting by bringing in Sipos's foil. You see, Aaron plays a very safe game of football, oftentimes just doing what needs to be done to get to the next punt or the next game and keep collecting checks. I could describe him as an okay punter because most of the time, he's just okay. He definitely has some games that are bad, where I would say that wasn't very good, and those probably balance out the games where I'd say he's been pretty good. If not, the bad games come in a higher supply than the good games. On the flip side, Ty Zettner is definitely a bit more of a feast or famine punter. He will give you some absolutely jaw-dropping games. I mean, just some stunning performances showing off insane leg talent. He also has had some stinkers himself. So I guess now that I'm thinking about it, he's actually just a slightly better version of Sipos in that regard, except instead of mediocre games, just replace them with Ty balling out. His floor seems higher than Sipos because I must remind everybody of the infamous Week 18 Cowboys vs Philly matchup, where Aaron laid an egg after averaging less than 30 yards a punt on three punts. So ultimately, when all is said and done, I think Ty is going to get the job done in rookie camp and run away with it into OTAs, and then come into the preseason games, I think he'll be able to beat them out. So I think Ty will be an upgrade to Sipos, but will he be a game changer for the Eagles? And I'm gonna say yes, and here's why I think so. Ty has played in some big games, notably the Big 12 Championship, where he had a hell of a game. I'm talking about multiple 50 plus yard punts, multiple punts getting pinned inside the 10. He showed some big distance balls, and of course he showed some big hang time punts. But also on top of this, the last little piece that's working in Ty's favor is in overtime in a big game, they need Ty to come out and lock the game away for him. And of course he runs out there with a big old smile on his face and puts that ball straight through the middle. What I'm trying to say is Ty is a baller, and I think that's what Philly needs. I don't know if they need a punter who's got just a consistent middle-of-the-pack ball that's always going to be from 39 to 46 yards, maybe the occasional big 50. Most of their games aren't decided on a mid-ball, right? If I were the Eagles staff, I want the guy who's going to give me at least one game-changing punt a game. The punter who's going to win me a game or two rather than just be a non-factor for every single game. Give me a punter who can do it under pressure too like Ty and we've got ourselves something special. So if he wins the job, I think the Eagles are going to have a guy that will do more than just get the job done for the next couple of years. But those are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comments below. And as always, peace.